Okay, it's recording. Hello, welcome to Nature Walks with Game, episode two, featuring Dot and and uh, people. Oh, that was a glare. We got a glare. Why did we get a glare? Uh oh. What did we do wrong? We're off. We are at Colonel Samuel Smith Park today. Oh, look, it's a sneaky spring bird. It is a majestic robin. Look at the buds. I know the buds are like, I don't know, robin. American robins are omnivores, so they'll eat tiny animals like bugs, but they will also eat plants like these sumac berries that you see this robin eating here. And they're an important source of food in the springtime when the ground is still frozen and there aren't many bugs around to eat yet. Red and blackbird. There's this call I keep hearing from over there near the marina. It almost sounds like penguins or something. Now this is what we call the sneaky dove that wants us to not know that it has a head. This dove does have a head. Oh, there it is. But he did not want us to know he had a head. But then it came out. Hello, silly dove. You are a morning dove, but you're not so sad. Oh, put the head away. And then pops it up again. You cannot fool us, silly dove. And now we move to the edge of the water. Though, as you may know, birds have trouble swimming through solid ice. Oh, guys, over here, look. Look, there's a duck. I think it's a diving duck. Oh, it looks like a merganser. Well, maybe not. I think there's some. They're all ducking away, right? Oh, yeah. Better part. Ducks. They're so automatopoeic. Yes, they are. This, however, of course, is not a duck, but a swan. The one we've seen before from last episode. You can just see the orange beak and black knob on the bill, letting us know that this is a mute swan. Now there are all sorts of different kinds of water birds in our world today. The ones we tend to be most familiar with here in Canada are ducks. But the other kinds uh, are actually rather distinctive in their shape. So just by looking at a couple quick traits, we can quickly tell that these are not ducks. First look at the shape and length of the neck. These birds clearly have much longer necks than you'd see on your average duck. Next look at the beak or bill. These birds have sharp pointed beaks. Most ducks don't have beaks that look really much like that at all. Also, we can look at the curvature of the head, particularly look at the back, and you can see that these birds don't have a nice uh, smooth curve. They have little tufts up at the back of the head, almost look like you know, little ears or something. Some ducks do have that, but most don't. Finally, an animal's very behavior can be very helpful in identifying what it is. These birds are spectacular divers. They dive very effectively without leaving much of a ripple at all on the surface, which eliminates a whole lot of different duck species. So by these characteristics, without even observing these animals for a very long time, I can very quickly identify them as being something other than a duck. These are creeps. I've never seen creeps like this before. This is very cool. Wow. Kicking out a little bit. Now there are multiple kinds of grebe that you can find along the shores of Lake Ontario, but the red neck grebe is unique in that it has that black cap on the top of the head, you have white cheeks, that's actually only for the winter plumage, but we can see them clearly today, and they have that rusty orangey color on their necks. Now I know that it's not actually red, but like red osier dogwood, which we saw in the last episode. But when scientists name animals, they tend to kind of use broad general terms. So, I mean, when they say red, it's like, well, it's definitely not green, more than it being like primary red. These birds dive to escape from danger and to catch their food. We know they can dive at least 10 meters in search of their prey. That long straight beak is a clear indicator that these are generalist carnivores that are great at catching food underwater. So now we're out by the bay. Down by the bay. Do, 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 do. Where are the I don't see any watermelons. 
But it is March. Do watermelons go in March? I don't think so. And someone out there is making a lot of noise. Are those trees making that sound? I, I think maybe. Well, I've had a terrible time since this day and actually trying to figure out what these specific noises that the Greaves were making were. It seems there's two main possibilities and they're kind of connected to each other. The first is that the noises could be the Greaves deciding who's going to be their romantic partner for the year, who they're going to have babies with. The second is that it could be competition between Greaves of the same sex. That could be linked to choosing their partner, so they're competing to get the affections of of one member of the opposite sex, or it could be just for space or for territory. The Greaves were, for the most part, so far out into the bay, and their interactions were so quick and over so quickly that I couldn't get my camera onto them fast enough to truly observe the behavior of the birds at the time. So if you have any insights, please let me know. And there's a little song for us. Sing his little heart. I'm almost as happy as I'd be to see a grieve do a dance. They don't want to do a dance for me. Pretty epic view from here. I'm sure you've noticed by now that there were other birds present out on the water on this day besides just the redneck greaves. But like the greaves, they tended to be kind of shy and staying out further in the water where they're difficult to identify. But fortunately, just like we noticed with the redneck greaves earlier, most animals have certain traits like color or pattern or shape. Birders refer to these as field marks or even behaviors that would give away the identity of an animal from a distance. We're gonna practice identifying four different species of ducks we're able to see on this day. Now, by playing everyone's favorite game, Ontario Duck Field Mark Blitz Game. Yay. 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 Time. Yay. Oh, I think those are gadwalls. Duck number one, the gadwall. Take five seconds and see if you can notice anything special that help you identify this duck. If you're like me, you probably think, nope, not at all, this is a very boring duck. But even this trait can help us in identification. But because this is a field mark blitz, I'm going to tell you very quickly what to look for. A bland duck with a dark beak, a big black spot on its butt and tail, and white spots on the base of the wings when it flies. That's a male gadwall. Oh, nice. Duck number two. This one you should already know from our previous episode. So I'll give you the field markings and you tell me what kind of duck it is. This duck is brown and non-distinct, but it has a light belly and white spots at the base of its bluish bill. And it's a diver. This is a female greater scop. Okay, duck number three. You probably saw it earlier in the episode if you were paying attention. This is a red-breasted merganser. Once again, you have five seconds to pick out some features to identify this bird. Go. All right, the main things I look for in a red-breasted merganser are a rusty orange chest, dark body and head with a light neck and light wings, and obviously that big red beak as well, and some extra feathers hanging off the back of the head. That will help you identify a male red breasted brigancer like this one. And our final species of duck, the long-tailed duck, which we also saw in our first episode. Here we have both a male and a female. This is extra tricky. Take another five seconds and see if you can tell them apart and find traits to identify this kind of duck.
Hey, give me an extra five seconds because there were two of them. Long-tailed ducks are extra hard to identify because they completely change their coloration from summer to winter. Here we're actually seeing their winter plumage. Both male and female long-tailed ducks have strong patches of light and dark coloration in their feathers. They both have multicolored beaks. The female's dark is more of a brownish on her belly and her back and on the top of her head and on her neck. The male has black patches instead of dark brown. His top of his head is white, and he also is the one that has the long tail that gives the species its name. And with that, we come to the end of our Ontario Duck Field March Blitz game. Yay! Yay. Time. Yay. Thanks for playing. Anyway, this has been a second Nature Walks with Gabe. Thank you for joining us. Tune in next time to see more bird nerdery and other things. Thank you, Lord, for beautiful days, your beautiful creation, and wonderful family to share it with. Amen. Pretty cool. Bye.